Today, I want to be able to do something a little bit different. There's a lot of people out there that love putting the puzzles together, including my wife and my granddaughter. They absolutely love it. And one of the problems they have is, where do you put the puzzle when it's not finished and you don't want to lose any of the pieces? Well, today I'm taking some scrap foam, and you can use Dollar Tree foam. You can pick up the foam from the Office Depot or someplace like that that has the sheets of foam, even Walmart. Uh, carry this and you can make very easily a storage box and trays that you can hold the pieces in really becomes easy and convenient to be able to make putting those puzzles together a whole lot more fun. I want to show you exactly how I put this one together today so that you can make your own. The good thing in my shop is I had some scrap foam laying around already. Now this foam had been used for other projects and the edges were quite damaged, bent, and in some cases just water damage too. In addition to that, a lot of this foam was not even square. So the first thing that I had to do is actually cut away the damaged areas and square up this foam so I had nice square sheets to be able to work with. Hopefully you won't have that problem in your shop. You'll buy some foam sheets that are nice, square, pretty edges, and ready to go. The puzzle that I'm working with today is 18 by 24. And I want to be able to make a board that you can actually put this down on and assemble it and then store it away in a tray. So the first thing we're going to start with is a board that's going to be 3 inches all the way around this. So that means it's going to be... 24 by 30 inches. So we'll measure that to the 30 inches and this to the 24. And I'll take the T-square and make that cut. Now because I have this piece cut and it's going to drop down inside of a, another box to be able to have this for storage, I want to cut out some little handles here. So I'm just measuring a four inch handle that I'm going to cut in so that you can be able to lift this from the inside of the box. And all I'm going to do is measure from the center and make this four inches and one inch of a cut should be plenty. And that way, that will give you the opportunity to put your fingers in there and grab this whole sheet with the puzzle on it to be able to lift it out of your tray. So to get this up close, this is what it's going to look like right there. Let me go ahead and cut this out now, and that will give you the finger hole that you need. Now, if you wish, you could make this round, but I'm just going to make this square just like I have it drawn here. So now I have the little handles on each side with this cutout makes it where I can easily pick this puzzle up and put it down in and out of the storage box. As you're assembling this puzzle, this is the board that you're going to be using to keep the puzzle on at all times. And that's going to be the one with these little cutouts so that you can be able to put it in and out of the tray. Now what I want to do is build two trays for all the parts that you can separate and keep the pieces as you separate it to put on top of this for storage. And I want that the same size as this board. Now remember this was 24 by 30 so I can make these trays 24 by the 15 inches to have them sit inside. So the exact size is 15 by 24, but I don't want to make it that rigid. I want to make it just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to measure out 14 and 7 eighths, and then on the 24 inch side, I'll do the same thing. I'll measure that 23 and 7 eighths. So that will be the size of the box. And I'm going to make two boxes that will cover the entire sheet that I have that we build a puzzle on. It would be nice to have a T-square long enough to be able to cut this all in one link, but unfortunately I don't. So I cut the portion that I can, flip it around, and then cut the remaining portion. Now remember, these two boxes are going to be 14 and 7 8 inches by 23 and 7 8 inches. Oh, and by the way, the T-square that would work perfect would be a sheetrock 
a T-square. Unfortunately, my son has mine, so I'm left with just this 24-inch T-square. Okay, time to get back to work. I have the two pieces cut now, but they're just a flat piece of um, foam board. I need to be able to turn this into a tray, and I need to put a ridge on here. Now, this doesn't need to be high, but I want to glue it with the hot glue right onto the edge. And the thickness that I want this to be is about a half inch high. Doesn't need to be high, it just needs to keep the pieces from falling off. Now this cut off piece is absolutely perfect. It gives me the correct length to begin with. All I need to do is measure out now my half inch pieces and cut enough for two trays. So I need a total of eight pieces a half inch long. I'm gonna measure out half inch increments all the way across. I can cut these all at one time. I don't need to cut these individually. So I'll make all my marks and then I'll take the knife and cut all my eight pieces. Now four of these pieces are the correct length. So that I don't have to do anything other than glue them on. Now the other four pieces I will have to cut two for each of the boxes. Now that's going to leave some leftover pieces. I'm going to use those scraps also to create a divider. Now that I have all the pieces cut, it's time to install them. I have the hot glue gun warming up over here on the side and I'm ready to install these strips. Now you really don't need a lot of glue. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here and spread it out along the way. The good thing about this is you have a little bit of working time. You don't have to really rush. But with the glue on the edge, all I'm going to do is just place it right on the edge of my bottom of my tray. To clean up the excess glue, just take a scrap piece of the foam and rub it right along the edge from the inside and that takes care of all the glue. If you have some on the outside, you can do the same exact thing and that makes it where it's a very nice, clean, pretty finish with no excess glue dripping out. I'm going to move to the other side now because these long strips work the correct size, so no cutting required. Once this is installed, my two short sides, I'll measure and cut. Now I don't need a tape measure. All I need to do is just put this strip right up next to the edge and mark it with a pencil, cut it with a knife, they're ready to install. And I use the same exact procedure. I'll put a little bit of glue along the bottom and I'll put a little bit of glue on each of the ends. Then position it right where it needs to go and it's gonna be a perfect fit. Again, if you have any glue coming out, just use that little scrap piece of foam and that cleans it up really easy. And now just repeat the process on the fourth and final side and that will complete it. The trays look fantastic. This is a very easy process to do, and the results are fantastic. I have the two trays completed, and one of the things that I had talked about was being able to have a divider that will just slip right into this. And I have the scrap pieces in here so that I can actually make several different dividers. Now, this is just sitting in here so that you can change the area that you want to be able to put the puzzle pieces in. But one of the things this might have a tendency to fall over. One of the things that we can do is just take another scrap that we have and glue it right to the edge. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of hot glue right along this edge. And then put it right there. Does it have to be perfectly centered? No, it really doesn't. Same thing, we'll just take the little scrap foam, wipe off the excess. That makes for a very clean look. Now you can drop that in. So if you want to have your puzzle pieces in here that's separated, that's great. If you need a larger area, you can do this. Now I'm going to make several different dividers so that you can divide yours up the way that you want to. And the way that I did that, I just simply put it in here made a mark and then cut it off. You can test fit it just to make sure that looks like that's going to work out real well. So again, I'll take one of my other little scraps and put the hot glue on it. And 
Now again, I'm not measuring. It does not have to be perfectly centered. So now we have two dividers that'll give you actually three different compartments for your puzzle pieces. And if you wanted to get even fancier, you could put a piece in this way if you wished. You can do this any configuration that you want. This just gives you an idea on one way to be able to have the dividers. Now, one of the things I want to point out, if you made this tray nice and square, these will drop in anywhere and be just a little bit snug. And that's what you want. Now, also, you have this little piece right here that gives it the extra support so it's not going to fall over. And don't forget, you can make as many of these as you want, depending on how you sort out the pieces of the puzzle. Some people will start with a border, and then they'll divide up the different colors, or they may divide up the shapes of the puzzle pieces. Doesn't matter, whatever works for you. This way you can have as many dividers as you want. So at this point, we have the two trays, and we have our bottom piece that's going to have the puzzle on it. Now that the two trays are done and the puzzle board itself, I need to make a top and a bottom. And I'm going to make the bottom first because I want this to be the correct size of this area that I already have. And we've got this measured out, so I'm going to cut this box to fit exactly, and I'll use this as the guide to do it. Now remember, this is 24 inches by the 30 inches. I'm going to add about a half inch to be able to make this bottom. That way it gives me just a little bit of wiggle room and I don't have to be absolutely perfectly accurate. So add a half inch to the 24 by 30 and I'll be able to make the bottom. I measured the thickness of everything that I have so far and decided that the side of this bottom needs to be an inch and an eighth. So again, I'm cutting these strips an inch and an eighth wide to be able to glue to the bottom piece. I would strongly suggest that you measure yours to be able to determine if this is the correct thickness because the foam that you buy may be of a different thickness and you would need it to have a different size. So please keep that in mind. This is what is going to work for my box, just not necessarily the same measurements exactly is going to work for the box that you build. Now I'm going to install this exactly the same way that I did when I was making the tray. And you can think of it this way. This is nothing more than a big tray. So keep this in mind. We built two small trays with dividers, and now we're building the top and bottom, which in essence is two more trays. So depending on how you want to divide out your uh, puzzle pieces, now you have extra trays that can be doubled as your top and your bottom. I want to double check and just make sure that this is going to fit in here real nice. And if that drops in, that looks real good. Gives me just a little bit of space on each side. I'll be able to lift these trays out and easily be able to grab a hold of my finger slots and lift this out. So that's going to work well. So we'll get this out of the way, finish putting the sides on. So at this point, the bottom is finished and everything drops right inside of this. We've already test fitted that. So the next thing is to build the lid. And I want the lid to be able to fit on the outside of this. So this bottom actually goes inside. So the easiest thing to do is just measure exactly what I need. And I wanna add just a little bit extra. And don't forget, you have to be able to consider the foam strips that you're putting around there as part of your measurement. Now I've got two edges cleaned up they're nice and straight and they're 90 degrees. I actually found that this sheet of foam was not actually square. So from the square corner, I'm going to measure up the measurement of 31 and a quarter. That's going to give me enough room to be able to have the sides and a little bit of extra wiggle room so that this box will fit on snug, but it's not going to be too tight. Now the first cut is done, we need to rotate this and cut it to second one. And this one is going to be 25 and a quarter. And that will be the same thing. It'll be a little bit snug, but it still gives me the wiggle room that I need. And again, I'm measuring from that square corner to be able to make this cut. So I'm finishing up the last cut now, and this gives me the top. 
and it's perfectly square and all the edges are nice and cleaned up. So from now, I need to be able to determine the side walls. How tall does this need to be? Well, the easiest thing to do is just measure it. So let me grab the bottom and we're going to measure the thickness of that. That's going to be the thickness that I need to make my top. So let's grab a tape measure and see what we get. And that's going to be one and three eighths of an inch. So that's going to be the size that I need. That should work perfect. I thought about adding a handle to each side of this to make it easier to be able to get the top off. Now I thought about using the buttons and decided, no, nah, that's not necessary. But I am going to use this twine to be able to make my handles. And I've marked out my location and I'm going to use the awl and I'm going to put two small holes in about four inches apart, two inches from the edge, and I'll run this string through it and tie it on the other side. Now I'm trying to keep the smallest hole possible so that the first don't succeed with having this twine go through there. That's okay, you can make the hole just a little bit bigger. But I was able to get mine through with a very small hole and that worked out real well. Then I just pulled the two ends through and just made the loop that I wanted. With that the correct size, I just flipped this over and tied a simple square knot and that's going to hold it just fine. And from there, I'll just take the scissors, cut off the excess, and my handle's complete. Very simple, but very effective. That's going to make it where I can lift off this lid very easily. Okay, one down, one to go. Let me put the handle now on the other side, and that part will be finished. And you can take a couple pieces of the scraps that you had and cut out something like this for a little stand to hold the puzzle uh, box so that you can get a good idea of what these pieces are going to look like and where they go. And what I think I'm going to do is just take a little piece of tape and tape these together. And that's going to be as simple as it gets. And then the other piece I'm going to set right next to it. I'm going to get this as even as I can. Fold this over and let it stick. And just like that, we have a stand that we can put our puzzle on. We have a little piece right here. I'll tuck that in. And I think I'm just going to cut this other piece off. Just like that. So, for something very, very simple and easy, let's see if this holds this great big box. And it does. It'll do just fine to hold the puzzle up. And then when you're done, fold this up, throw it in the same box with the puzzle, and you'll be ready for next time when you want to be able to set up your box, open it up, throw it on, and you're ready to go. All right, it's time to see if this all fits. I'm going to drop in this piece, and the puzzle would go into there. Now I have a puzzle that my granddaughter just finished doing. But I'll put that in there because this is where we would be able to work on our piece. We can take it out, we can do whatever we want to with it and then drop it back into this. From there, we'll take all the puzzle pieces on the tray and slip the trays inside of here. And don't forget your stand for your box. We'll leave that in there. And then we can take the top and put it right over on top of this. And we're ready to slide this under the bed, um, wherever you want to store this, and you're not going to lose any puzzle pieces. And when you're ready to work on the puzzle again, just simply take the lid off, and you got everything right there at your fingertips. I think this is a perfect solution, and it's the best that I have been able to come up with. And it certainly beats those roll-up mats that, in my opinion, just don't work. Thank you for watching the video today. I really appreciate you stopping by the shop and spending some time with me. Now, I know this project was a little bit different than what I typically do, but it definitely was a problem that I needed to be able to solve. And the other solutions that are out there, to me, just did not work. So today... Putting this box together to be able to hold the puzzle pieces, the trays, and even a stand to be able to support the box 
all was very important. And it goes together in a real convenient way that you can slide it under the bed or in a closet to store it safely until you're ready to work on that puzzle again. So if you like this video, by all means, go ahead and give me the thumbs up and don't forget, hit the little subscribe button down there and the bell notification so that you'll be notified on the different videos. You can see that I'm doing quite a variety of different types of projects and I'm gonna to continue to do that. There's a lot of CNC, laser, 3D printing, all kind of different things that I'm gonna be doing real soon. You're not gonna to wanna to miss out. But for now, I wanna say bye-bye and I can't wait to see you in the shop again.